I'd like to start uh, just by by thanking thanking my my coaching staff and um, and Kathy and Monty and it has been uh, two and a half wild weeks of traveling, uh, recruiting, re-recruiting eleven guys that that all stayed committed, uh, and then finding finding twelve more, you know, and uh, from the student assistants to the athletic department to the resources uh, that that allow us to get around this country in a special way, uh, none of this would have been possible without them. So uh, I want to take the opportunity to say thank thank you to them, and uh, and we're we're excited about this group. I mean, it is a it is a special group, and um, and we we put it together in a short amount of time. Uh, but I'm I'm really excited about the future uh, with these with these guys we're announcing and bringing in today. So. I'm sure you have a ton of questions, so um, go ahead and bring them at me when you have them. Coach, I think uh, you know one of the most interesting things to see out of this core is the, the large number of linebackers that you have. Is that something you can talk a little bit about? Yeah, yeah linebackers are always interesting because they're they're also special teamers. So uh, anytime you can get one, this is an interesting class because you don't, in my opinion, you don't want to ever stretch. You want to make sure you're getting quality guys and they're character guys that fit the program. And that was probably the biggest thing. For every one of these new guys we brought in, we turned away two, three, four that just didn't fit. Or there was if there was any flag, we, we ran the other way. Uh, so, you know, offensive line-wise, we took one. You know, we had a number we wanted to hit, but we'd go over if we had a, the right guy, you know. Uh, Linebacker-wise, we had the number we wanted to hit. But we'd go over if we found the right guy. You know what I mean? So, so a couple of positions we're we're a little bit over where uh, of our goal number. But that happens, you know, as long as you're finding the right guy. But uh, but we ended up, yeah, with a, a couple. I think it's uh, O line, wide receivers. A couple. Well, wide receivers are probably right on the money now. But uh, when you can find the right person, um, the goal numbers are just a are just a target. You know, the target numbers. That's where we're going at. And then you're trying to find the right people. We might be one over one year. We might be one under one year. Uh, but, yeah, we, we went over on a couple just because we found pretty special guys. Yeah, six linebackers. I mean, what, uh, you know, did, did you find – Yeah, because – After you got some secured, did you find that guy then? To yeah, it all depends on and what they're going to be. You know, some of them can, will eventually p can put their hands down maybe. Some of them, they're outside the box guys that can play nickel and safety. So, yeah. Um, you know, and some of them, are, I mean, you look at some of these, the size of some of these linebackers, 6'3", 6'3", 6'2", you know. So if they can run and bend, and some of them are 240 pounds already, 230 pounds already. So um, so it gives you a lot of options. You know, when you have big, when you have big, long guys that can run, whatever two letters are next to their name is is, is great. But but definitely in those six are, are some of those guys, you know. Yes. Got two left. Two left. On purpose. That's, that's, what I was that's planned. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, with with senior grad, there's all kinds of stuff that happens now. It's never good to pigeonhole your 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 opportunities to be better this fall. You know, and it was a unique situation anyway, as far as the timing of the whole thing. So, so I thought it was going to be hard even to get to 23. You know, a couple times I thought we might not even have the two that I wanted. You know, but luckily we landed exactly where I wanted to. Um, but yeah, that's that's by design. You know, that's definitely by design. And the recruiting class as a whole, I mean, there's the mystery out of, out of here, the, the class of June, and then yeah. the new guys you brought in. But does any of that matter at this point when it's just recruiting? No, we had them. Uh, you know, it's they're different. I mean, the guys that stayed with us are special. I mean, they are they're a special group of those eleven, the proud eleven. You know that that I think are going to have a heck of a college football career. And a heck of experience, you know that that love this place, that love the culture. They love our players, you know, and, they, and they're making their decisions for all the right reasons. Uh, I, I think the biggest thing with those guys was just not knowing for that short amount of time, and then and it, and they just wanted to know who and, and have a chance to sit down with me, and 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 I just told them about the same thing I, we've been talking about that this this is a special culture in that room, and that's not changing, and uh, and so it's been fun. I've been getting to see them a bunch more and more and more, and. Obviously, trying to find new guys. I've been spending a lot of time with those guys. So, um, but.
but yeah, so it is definitely a unique class that way. And uh, you know, I think they're all on some group chat together, and they hit it off immediately. So things are all good in that in that regard. But uh, it's a special year, it's a special 17 days or whatever the number's been. Um, but I think it's been it's oh, we're off to a good start. Well, we were, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there were there were, there were a couple that had already made their decision on where they were going, um, and then there was a couple that just just decommitted, you know. So we have to, we actually went after all the decommitted guys that had had not recommitted anywhere, um, and we were in some of those schools that of the guys that flipped. And of course, you talk to the coach, you know. Some of them, you know, are they solid? Are you know, you do that with anywhere though, you know. Um, but no, we didn't actively chase. Uh, any of those guys, but we definitely have a conversation with the high school coach saying, is he solid? If he is, then good. I make it very clear to every single recruit, no matter what level I've coached at, Division One, Two, II, and Three, I want you to want to be here. Bottom line, if you don't want to be here, you're not going to be any good. And this is right before I'm asking them to commit. I'm saying, if you don't want to be here, I don't want you here. If you want to be here, because college football is hard, you better, it, there's no, you know, just dipping your toe in the water. You got to jump in, you know? So, uh, so yeah, I mean, trying to talk people out of things is not is not in my. I don't. I don't believe. Yeah, I might. You might win for the short term, but I don't think a lot of those guys turn out to be great players when they're not sure that they love the the color of their jersey. You know. Yeah, I mean, you touched on it in your opening statement, but just how incredibly hard was it to take in a massive staff and start in a seventeen day draft till today to be part of you know all this process? It was unbelievable. You know, uh, over those first three days of, of finding, finding the, putting the staff together was while trying to, you know, it, the, I think the most unique part of the whole thing, which at the time I thought was crazy and looking back I think was genius by, by our, our administration was having the visit going on, you know, as I was announced, you know, and I didn't even, you know, so I was, ap after I was announced I was able to go meet, you know, which really made my first couple of days even more busy than they already are between speaking and recruiting and not and then doing coaches from 10 to 3 in the morning trying to get coaches here because your day is is part of the media and and recruiting the 11 guys that are on campus you know uh, it was exhausting but but I think really smart that I got a chance to sit down with each of those families within 48 hours of getting the job you know so um, and then you know you know our coaching staff that they work hard they love this place they're excited about the future uh, i think that drives people you know and uh and they did a heck of a job they were all over this six hour radius back and forth and back and forth and so was i and uh and they did a heck of a job when you first got here you know we thought this you know college was such a you know college was the class that was really going to turn it around but then you made your you know big discovery and found mm -hmm. elsewhere do you feel like you salvaged the class or do you feel like you did yeah I feel great about it you know just uh, like a lot of the people were asking them of the tw of the 12 you know I I thought you know get on the internet and stuff and I thought we had like 15 or or 13 guys when I got here I found out we really just had 11 you know so uh and we needed to re-recruit those 11 those 11 needed to know how I felt about them after I watched their film and and, and we kept every single one of those guys um and then and then going to find the, the 12 others, you know, 23 was always the number, you know, that we wanted. And um, so it was, you know, I think it's a, it's a great mix, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm excited about the guys. They fit, they fit in the culture of our locker room. And that's, that's really what I'm always going to ask. After they're above the line or below the line athletically, if they're above the line, we're going to rate them by character if we think they're good enough, you know. That's hard to do in a short amount of time. You know, if I told you how many times we'd watch a guy on film and say, wow, he's above the line, I'd send a coach or two out to his high school and the coach would call me and say, he doesn't fit, you know. Or I asked him, true story, I asked him, you know, what, is, you know, what he loved, and he said basketball. And he said, so I asked him again, and he said basketball. But I liked football. <laughs> and then, he, then we left that high school immediately. You know what I mean? And that's a true story. So, um, so yeah, I think – I, I'm, I'm excited about about the class and and um, and the you know that they're they're excited about this place and about being with our players.
But uh, it was a difficult situation, and I, I feel like our coaches did a heck of a job. You know, the truth, the, the future will tell. But uh, but meeting the people that that are going to be wearing, you know, the brown and gold next year, I, I feel pretty good about them. Coach, how much do you think some of that's a factor of being in the league as a part of that and you know getting into the whole league next year? I was part of that. I'm an alum. <laughs> Go ahead. Finish the question. Raise the the profile of Western Michigan to to get some of those you know to be identifiable. With. Oh yeah, I mean the the you know when you say Western Michigan University and you talk about the Broncos right now, it's at a it's at an unparalleled place. You know that's why I tell I tell people all the time that um, I would have taken this job if we lost five hundred games in a row, but unfortunately we're instead we're at the highest place we've been. You know. And um, and that helps, you know. When you're if you're in the six hour radius, I, I think it's um, I think people know who we are. But if you ever do extend outside of there, uh, you know, playing in the Cotton Bowl and, and playing playing how we played against a, a team like Wisconsin uh, made a big difference. You get instant buy in and credibility, and and it helps when when you're when you're especially when you're recruiting in such a quick amount of time, you know. And I apologize to a lot of parents and you know, that this is faster than it normally is, and that's okay. They, they couldn't control that, and I couldn't control that, you know, but we did the, the best we could getting to know each other and making sure we checked out, you know, dotted all our I's and crossed all our T's, and um, that that's really what we spend most of our time on is just background check, background check, background check. Um, normally, you get a whole year to do that, not 17 days, but, uh, but yeah, it, it definitely helps. Can you talk a little bit more about the process of your background check? You just call everyone you know that knows that coach. Really, you start with a coach. And then you start driving around to every school in the area and say, you played against this team. What do you know about it? Because people love talking bad about the other teams. You know what I mean? Because some coaches, they'll always say good stuff. But when you go to the Crosstown Rival and say, tell me about Johnny over there, they'll tell you the truth. You know? And uh, so you just it's really just being on the phone and driving around and asking every single person in the area code. And sometimes it's other coaches, too, that you know that have offered them. You call them and say, hey, Bill, tell me about this guy. Sometimes they give you good information. Sometimes they don't. It's just a, it's a pouring in of information. You're just looking for one red flag to run the other way, you know, because uh, we don't have to get 23. 23 was kind of my goal. I, was, I would have been fine with 21 or 22, you know, um, but we happened to land right, right where we wanted to be. I think a good amount considering what's been going on the last 17 days, but still not enough. The Tomorrow, and I'm meeting with every single player one-on-one, -on -one, which I haven't had a chance to do. I've uh, met with them, shoot, my, the, the day I got the job. Uh, I met with them the next Tuesday morning. Uh, I met with them. I've met them with once or twice a week as a as a whole, you know. So, which is a lot considering the number one important thing for 17 days was recruiting. But I still wanted to get in front of them, you know. And so we've had a lot of chance to talk to. I've had three leadership council meetings already in that 17 days while while being all over the country. Um, but tomorrow, at eight o'clock till five o'clock at night. I will be in that office and meeting one on one on one, and then Friday morning too, uh, until I can get the whole team and face to face, eye to eye with me. So, so I think we've done a good job of because that is what matters, right. you know. So is recruiting. I mean, sometimes you got two great things and you got to balance them. But uh, I think we've done a good job with that. But I, I really, I'm looking forward to tomorrow morning of sitting. I know Bogan's last. He put himself last because he said he's got some things. To, he's, he's excited about talking. You know, I'm like, uh, you know, he says he can talk, and I can too. So, um, so it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Coach, is there a, a name or two on this list that you could maybe get back in the short term, maybe even next year, or is that not something? That yeah, there's actually, I mean, there, and, and, you know, one thing you're going to learn about me is I'm, I'm all about our players whatever I can do to promote them, you know, and help them along. There is one guy that's not on this list that, that we have one more NLI in our hands right now that I'm not announcing yet. It'll be announced about 2.30 today because he asked me. He sent his NLI in first thing this morning. Uh, so that'll be coming out. There's one more name on this list uh, that I think is a really talented player. And, and he called, and him and his coach called. They do something at the school that was special. 
I said, great, man. I, I can, you know, as long as you send it in at 7.01, <laughs> then we're good. You know, I, I can wait to make it official. So, and, and announce it and do all the, the media part of it. So, so there will be one more uh, this afternoon. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's plenty. You know, we talk about where we're looking at in the receiving core, you know, losing what we lost. Uh, you know, there's going to have to be if you're going to rotate receivers like you need to. Uh, you're going to have to have some guys that are ready to play, especially that position. And a lot of that is, you know, what's in front of you and, and how deep we are. You know, when you rotate on defense the way we're going to rotate on defense, the, some of those guys have got to be ready to play, you know. Um, offensively, you know, offensive line, it's always hard to come in young and quarterback-wise too. Uh, but the wide receiver spot definitely is going to be uh, going to be an opportunity for those guys to come and compete immediately. Yeah. And you might yeah. be excited that he's going to get that. Because yep. you talk about wide receivers. Can you talk about him specifically? Because yeah. He's good from Cathedral. Cathedral. Yeah, yeah it's not. A, it's and, and on top of that, I'll make it a two part question. Okay. Get used to this question. The double it up. Okay. No. Uh, Wheaton, Illinois, is a kind of a hotbed for receivers. It's I know it well. We're losing kids from Wheaton, but we've got a kid on the roster, a true freshman. Yeah. Imagine you're going to continue to go back and draw from that pool of talent. From Wheaton? Yeah. <laughs> That's where I came from. I, I you know? know. So, uh, yes. And I actually, I mean, when I was here last time, I recruited Matt Stevens and Grant Nemeth uh, that were on the team in the in the mid 2000s. They were they were Tigers. Yeah. You know. But uh, yeah. So um, we're lucky to have one Tiger on the roster. But Luke, I mean, he is long. Yeah. I mean, long. Tall, all of all of six four, and can run, and uh, does a great job adjusting to the ball. I mean, he holds, he holds every single receiving record at Cathedral. You know, sometimes records don't matter when you say, hey, at, at this school he holds records. No, no, he, they've had plenty go through that place. Uh, so the fact, and he's an all state. He's got all the all league, all state dream team or super team. I think they call it in Indiana. Um, but he is a he is a long, and I mean, I hit it off with him and his his mom and his dad immediately and um because they were here the day i got hired you know and uh and then went down there and saw him at, at the school but it is uh you know that's the kind of length that you need i mean the catching radius and you know jalen hall's another one uh who uconn came after late and actually indiana came late after uh luke and uh so you always have a couple late runs you know virginia had made a late run at our other receiver you know um so and they all they all stuck with us, but yeah, those guys. When you have uh, the catching radius like that, it can it can bridge the gap a little bit uh, from experience, you know, of of how to run routes, how to use, how to be physical. He's got to get in the weight room, uh, but they all do. That's that's nothing nothing out of the ordinary. I, I was just going to ask that because that's kind of a big adjustment. These kids have all been stars at the high school level, but to excel in Division One play, um, they're going to have to bulk up. Up oh yeah, time, so. it's a whole new level. You know, you learn quickly. You know the, but the, I'll tell you this: the the gap's smaller than it used to be, with trainers now. And I mean, I remember when Wheaton Warmville South, uh, you know, we were like the only school that had a, that had a weight program and lifted, you know. And now everyone does. I mean, they're training, they're lifting, they're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger, they're being trained by personal trainers. So, I think that's one of the reasons you see so many young young players playing earlier than ever before you know because uh, they're they're physically a lot more ready than they used to be so um so there's definitely a gap but i definitely think it's smaller than it, it was in the past you know which which you know you look at the kids when they walk through the door and it, you can tell it's a lot less than it used to be on a personal note can you you know you were here in the late 90s and then you were here in the early 2000s or 2014 2015 driving around Yes, that no doubt. Working. It's yeah. awesome. Like I, I this morning, I was driving, and uh, and I was just thinking, man, I love this place. As I was driving down Stadium Drive, you know, like there's so many different things that have happened. Like we we took his grand tour of the facility, and we walked in Sangren Hall, which is the college that I was in. Right. 
Let me tell you, Sangra did not used to look like that. I mean, it's a beautiful building. It, it smelled different. It was like we walked in, and I was just like, "This is." And, and the, the person giving the tour was like, "This is Sangra Hall." I'm like, "Wow, this is not the Sangra I know," you know. And then I drove around the other side, and I saw this beautiful building where Maggie's used to be, and I was like, "Oh my God, Maggie's is gone. Breakfast too." And then I drove by it the other day, and I saw it somewhere else, and I was like. It's still alive, you know. So I was fired up about that. So there's just so, so many things as I drive around and you see things have moved and and some of the things are. I mean, so many improvements to the facilities and to the, the campus as a whole. Um, it's it's a it's pretty amazing. The, the guys that we have that are leaving, the students, mm -hmm. um, Ron goes to the right. Yep. You know, can you talk about? Have you had a chance to talk to the Zach Santori's and the? I talked to Zach on the phone. Yeah, and a lot of them are out training. Some of them are out training. I, I met. Uh, I'm. I've talked to Zach on the phone. Uh, just, you know, Tim Hiller is still one of my yeah. closest, dearest friends, and and I, I, one of my favorite people in the world, and uh, and he was able to hook me up because he he's a great mentor to Zach. I think yeah. it wouldn't surprise me knowing Tim, and and uh, so, so I had a chance to get him on the phone a little bit and ask him about this team, and and uh, I can't wait to talk to Corey. He's a tiger. Like me, I'm looking forward to sitting down and talking to him. I know he's training and, and, and getting and getting ready for that stuff. So I haven't had much of a chance yet, but I'm looking forward. He, I mean, those guys, I mean, they're they're with me now. Yeah. They're alumni, you know what I mean? And, and it's important for us to let the current players know how much we care about them, you know, because cause they're, wearing this, cause they're wearing that logo and we know what they're going through, you know. So, uh, so you know, hopefully I can be the first one to welcome them into, into that next step. You know. Can you talk about the uh, interaction with uh, the, the players and the recruits that you have locked in before signing day, but then the other people in Indiana and other people come in and, and start you know, flashing on them? And yeah, it's different. Everyone's a little different, you know. Uh, you know, sometimes they they think about it for a minute, you know, and uh, and then they have you have to have a, a conversation with them. Saying, you know, you can go on this visit if you'd like to, but, you know, I just, I need to go. I need to protect this program. That's my job. I'm going to bring another guy in. So when you go on this trip, go ahead. Uh, I wish you the best. I want you to want to be here. So if you want to go check that out, go ahead. But I'm going to bring somebody in this weekend. You know, just I'll be honest with them. I mean, my best and worst qualities, I'm bluntly honest, you know. And, um, and, then, and then the next day, you know, on one of them, I got a call right back saying I'm not going. They just needed some time to to mill it over, you know. Uh, and other times you have coaches that don't even let them in the building, you know, which, you know, which on the Virginia one, the, they, the guy they came after was, coach was like, no, you're not. And then they tried to call and call and they stopped answering the phone, you know. So everyone's a little different. And, uh, you know, we, we went in on a couple guys that, that and they said no. And we had to walk away. Another one said, I am interested, you know. So, you know, it's not, I don't think it's that complicated of a process. If if you're just being honest with them and 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 you know I don't we wouldn't want it not not one of these guys did we have to talk in you know to wanting to be part of this place you know that's the beautiful thing about this place is that it, it sells itself in in many ways. Do you remember that time in your life when you were uh, oh. going in? I mean, how stressful was that? Whew. I mean, my recruiting was was different. Um, Recruiting was different back then, anyway, you know. But I, all, it all changed the moment I blew my knee out. I mean, I was going to Florida or or UCLA or one of those schools. I mean, it was done deal. Uh, I think I was just immature at that moment. I was going to go to the biggest school that would have me, you know. And then I blew my knee out, all by myself. And back then, you know, it wasn't like clip clip, you're back. It was like it's over, you know. What I mean, like they didn't know a lot about injuries, you know. And the one guy that came in my, my school offered me and was just a great man from beginning to end was Rob Kuhlman, you know. All the other Mac schools were like, you're too big for, you're too big, you're too big. Rob came in and said, here's, you know, he gave me uh, this uh, information, and he was great. And uh, so I called him. I mean, people started dropping. Florida dropped me. Everyone started dropping me. You know, I remember talking, the, the, one, the one conversation I had that still means the most to me is with Steve Spurrier, because that's where I wanted to be Danny Warfarl. I don't know if I said that right, but that's who I wanted to be. And uh, so I was going I, December 4th, and it was a playoff game. I blew my knee out, so I already had tickets. Called my recruiting guy, and he's, I was like, hey, I blew my knee out. I want to let you know I had surgery. 
And he's like, uh, hold on. And Spurrier got on the phone. He's like, Tim, you know, <laughs> he said, you know, there's about 20 of y'all All-American quarterbacks. He's like, I'm going to get two of them. But recruiting is an inexact science. He's like, I don't know which one of y'all is going to be the next Danny Ruffin. He said, so if I can take one that's had knee surgery and one that hasn't, who am I going to take? I said, sir, you're going to take the one that hasn't. He said, I wish you the best of luck. And that was it. And here's the the great the the old ball coach saying it's an inexact science. You know what I mean? Like this guy's a, a legend, you know. And uh, and that was it. And I you know handed over to the position coach. I said I got this ticket. He's like, don't worry, we'll cancel it. And boom, Florida was over. You know. So uh, you know a couple of, a couple of bigger ones like West Virginia stayed with me. And uh, you know, but then I started visiting. Once I came on this campus, it was a done deal. You know, West Virginia wasn't very happy when I chose Western Michigan over. But I, I wouldn't change one thing. I'd blow my knee out 500 times again. Uh, you know, my senior year, we played Florida. You know, and he, you know, it's the one thing you learn about Coach Spurrier is he's got like a – he remembers everything. He's one of those guys that remembers it all. And after the game, I was shaking hands, you know, and he, you know, he tapped me on the shoulder. I turned around and I – because I didn't think he'd remember me. That was five years ago, you know. And he was like, damn. That knee healed up okay, didn't it? I'm like, yes, sir, it did, you know? So, uh, but yeah, so that's that's the kind of, I mean, my my recruiting was so different because it changed. I thought it was going one way. And we had some guys here that that found out one way or the other late that, that the school that they were committed to had changed their mind, you know? And 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 we were there, you know? And so, because every, every guy's story is different, you know, on this, especially when you're talking about a 17-day period. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely thought I was going one way, and then, then reality hit me quick, and I, I'd never been hurt, and I started thinking about where do I want to go to school, and that was my answer at Western Michigan was if I could never play football again, I'd want to go here. Cool. Um, we obviously lost our, our freshman kicker and kicking is so important. How, can you tell us how you ended up in Flower Mound? Well, you know, he was actually offered by the previous staff right before on their way out the door um i have a guy that i know know that's in my opinion a genius when it comes to special teams he uh he started with me at elmer's college i brought him to syracuse with me um he then went to the denver broncos and won a super bowl as the coach a special teams coach there and uh so i just call him and say watch this kid let me know and uh Loved him. I think he. I think he's ranked. Uh, Josh is ranked number seven by the Sailor Gurus. They know a lot more about it than us. If I'd be lying if I told you I knew anything about it, although the ball needs to go between those two uprights, you know. Um, so when you're not an expert, you find someone that is, and he is. Um, and so I called him, said, "Watch this kid. We've offered him. I want to know what you think." He loved him. I went down and met him, and loved the kid. Great kid. Um, so. Lucked into him. He he wasn't committed yet, but it kind of lucked into that one, and 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 I got the guy, the one guy that I truly trust as far as knowing, kicking and punting, uh, gave me the thumbs up on him, and he'll continue to be that guy, you know, because uh, he's he's really sharp, you know. Is that something unique today, or even though you, you feel good about these guys, but just the team you actually see that part of the time? Oh, when they come in, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, it feels really good. Uh, there's just so much to do. I can't wait till tomorrow. I want to meet the players. And that's 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 really what I'm thinking about now. This is great, and this is great, and tonight we'll do some social stuff with everybody, which would be great. But tomorrow morning I get to sit and talk to my team, you know, and uh, the guys that really make the culture gr go are going to be my meetings in the next two days. So so I'm kind of getting excited about that, I think. I think that's the one thing I've been waiting, looking forward to is getting around these guys. And um, and now we found some quality guys to join that culture and to throw in that locker room. But I'm I'm looking forward to getting even tighter with the guys that I get to coach. Well, we'll be